So I started out this week by making another screw, a bolt for this uh, under lever. And uh, it's really just a simple lathe operation, uh, just a matter of turning it down to the right diameters for the hole and for the um, you know, recess in the under lever, and then threading the end of it. And then uh, the rest of it's just a matter of tapping the, the hole that I'd previously drilled. Um, what holds this in, you'll notice there's no screw slot in here, so there's no screwdriver action from this side. Uh, it's uh, screwed in from this end, it gives it a real neat clean look. No uh, no screw slot in there, just makes it a nice button. And then there's a set screw that's drilled and tapped that holds it in place right beside the screw. And so that uh, keeps everything nice and neatly done. And if you uh, time everything out properly, you can make it all line up real pretty and uh, make it a real nice clean look. But uh, the only thing special about this bolt is that it, uh, the shoulders have to be properly cut. Um, you need a shoulder that uh, bottoms out against the under lever with just enough slack in it to give you a nice free rotation without binding but you don't want it to slack off the bottom of the action at all so the clearance has to be you know really fine and then there's a second shoulder that actually the threads actually shoulder up against the um, bridge in the action and so that actually bottoms it out so a little bit of precision cutting but uh, nothing particularly difficult about it but uh, you can see it gives it a nice clean look real neat little button there and then all your screw slots are inside where it will be hidden when the gun's assembled. There's one other thing to do to this and uh, what I need to do is uh, underneath the lip on this outside edge I need to drill a hole, put a spring in and a detent and then drill a small divot in the shoulder on the under lever so that when it comes to this position of fully open it can't rotate past it. Right now, without that detent in there, it can rotate past the the uh, full open position. And uh, in the field, of course, if you were you know in a dangerous game situation or whatever, that could be a problem because if it flops past there and you reload and try to close it, it's going to hit the shoulders on the uh, T section. So I need to put a detent in that'll keep it from rotating past 90 degrees. But that's a real simple job. It's just drill a hole underneath where the shoulder is. Uh, spring in a small detent and then uh, drill a small divot in the uh, shoulder area and then taper it out so that it rotates easily to the locked position but it stops dead at the open position. So that's what I'll do next is I'll put a little detent under here and then uh, I can move on to doing the uh, firing pin work. Hopefully you can see this drawing well. Um, and obviously this isn't to scale or anything, I just drew this to give you an idea of what's going on inside the firing pin hole. So I won't be able to you know, get the camera down in there to show you. So this is the breech face here and the water table and then this would be the radius of the dome in behind the breech face. And so what I've got is I've got a firing pin hole that penetrates the breech face and it penetrates just slightly above the center line of the of the primer. Uh, the reason for that is is because with the angle that it comes in at, um, if you tried to go center to center, it, you'd end up having glancing blows that would be at the bottom of the firing pin. So you drill just a little ahead of it, and that way it gives the angle time to reach to center. Uh, so there's firing pin diameter down here. Then it opens up to this section, and there will be a spring, a return spring in here, and a shoulder on the firing pin. Then it opens up a little wider, and this is the thread diameter here, and it gets threaded. And then there's a slight shoulder up here that gets relieved in uh, with a slightly larger diameter to allow it to thread down in and shoulder tight to the section that's machined flat on the dome. So basically what I wanted to show you was that uh, you know there's this is done in, in stages progressively going from firing pin diameter to thread diameter and then relief cut for the thread. And uh, what this does is uh, gives it a, uh, if you ever uh, rupture a primer, the firing pin will back up and the shoulder on the firing pin will stop against the thread shoulder of the nut, retaining nut, and it gives the gases some place to escape to. Um, it's a pretty safe system, works real good. Um, I've never had a primer rupture with this setup, but uh, you know, in, in the event that ever, it ever happens, uh, it, it's just a little safety feature that way. You've got a shouldered shouldered firing pin that uh, butts in tight and it actually takes a lot of pressure um, amazing amounts of pressure to remove uh, a good shouldered fit thread so pretty good way to do it
I'm going to take you in and, sh and show you the setup on the mill and the tooling that's required to make this. Um, you know, you'd think it's just a little bit of drill work and, and some tapping, but it actually takes quite a bit more work than that, and I wanted to show you how it's done. And uh, so I'm going to take you in and show you the setup on the mill and uh, show you the tooling involved. So there it is. And uh, the double rifle is actually quite a bit easier to do than the single shot because on the double rifle, the firing pin center line is basically center line of the outside edge of the action. Um, you know, it's, it's close to it anyways. So the angle isn't really inclusive. Uh, you know, it's not a compound angle. It's a single angle that uh, penetrates straight through from top to uh, center, you know, above center line of, of firing pin and then centered from uh, top to bottom that way basically. So, pretty simple setup actually. It's just a matter of getting the angle of the action set right and then finding your center locations and uh, drilling through. Um, whereas on the single shot, because the uh, edge of the hand or the edge of the action and whatnot is actually the edge of the barrels, it's actually to do a firing pin on the single shot, it's actually a compound angle where it comes in from the outside as well as down uh, into the center line. So, this is actually a little easier to do on the double rifle to get the center line um, drill point. And so what's done is uh, take a ton of measurements. I mean, tons and tons of measurements. I measure this thing from every direction I can find uh, to get my my center lines and everything to where I know I'm going to hit where I want to on my primers. I just take measurements from every angle, every direction, breech face, top, bottom, sides, everywhere I can think of to get a good set of measurements. And when I set it up in here, I use proper angle finders against the surfaces and set up, you know, center line of my um, mill. And then the very first cut that's made, I check that, of course, with that setup, I check that every direction I can think of. I want to check it every way I can. Um, the reason I do that, the reason I spend so much time doing this one setup on these is because if you screw up the, if you screw up drilling these holes, you know, there's only really one way to fix it, and that would be to bush the face of the breech face, put a bushing in there and then redrill it and do it again. So I really only want to do this once and I want to get it right the first time. So anyways, once everything's all set up and I know for sure that it's in the proper position and everything's lined up where it's supposed to be, then the first thing I do is come in and uh, machine the face to the flat. And so that's basically a plunge cut. Coming in with my tooling and I just plunge cut into this and uh, take it down to uh, where it just makes a flat all the way around. So, you know, basically what I'm basically what I'm trying to say is where the where the radius comes to the point here, that's where my flat stops. So it's you know pretty deep on this side, and uh, there's a little bit of an edge over here that I'll have to take down, and do a little file work, and smooth out, and make it basically go away. So the first tool I use is an end mill that's a larger diameter than the uh, nut that's going to be the the keeper nut for the firing pin. And that's a plunge cut with this large end mill. And then once the plunge cut's done, the next step is to use a uh, center drill to uh, get a good start. And then this is the uh, firing pin drill bit <coughs> for diameter for the firing pin. And uh, you know I try and buy mostly new tooling to do this with. Um, so you know especially with this very first hole, I want to use a new drill bit every time. That way it doesn't drift or wander. And then the next drill bit is the size to make clearance for the return spring. And then because I want a flat shoulder instead of a tapered shoulder inside of there, I use an end mill that's the same size to come in and uh, shoulder it up after it's drilled. So it gets a nice flat shoulder for the spring to push against. Then the next size of drill bit is my tap size drill bit. And then I've got uh, the three taps here. Uh, to go from uh, you know starting the hole to uh, uh, bottoming cut to get the maximum amount of threads in there, and then the last one is an end mill that's slightly larger than tap size to uh, give a relieved shoulder uh, inside the uh, beginning of the threads. Uh, the reason for the relieved shoulder is is uh, you know it's very difficult to get a, a thread to cut clear clean to the shoulder of a nut. And so uh, what I want to do is instead of instead of taking anything off the behind the shoulder of the nut, I want to take it out of the action uh, so that it'll shoulder down and, and tighten down clear flush to the um, first seat that I made. So that's the tooling involved uh, in uh, making all those cuts and, and holes and getting everything tapped for the nut size. And so this side here is done, and uh, you can see. Uh, 
it's got a nice flat in it that cuts into the action the tang section a little bit then it's got the threads in here and it's drilled all the way through with the stepping up in sizes and then threaded and shoulder relief shouldered to allow the nut to seat tight so now I'm just going to move over and uh, do the other side the same way uh, checking all my alignments and everything and, and get it drilled and tapped just like that So I have both holes done, drilled, tapped, well, countersunk the whole nine yards. Now I'm just doing a little primer function test here. Never know just how hard to hit those the first time. Sometimes they pop right away, sometimes you got to tap them a couple times. But uh, anyways, just to make sure that everything's in alignment and the primers are hitting properly, easy way to do it is just to uh, stick a right proper size diameter pin in and give it a couple taps. And and it'll pop a primer if it's everything's working like it's supposed to. So there's the two firing pin nuts, uh, machined, shaped, and in place. I'll take one out so that you can see what it looks like. It's nothing uh, really fancy, but it'll certainly do the job. It's uh, thread to match the thread depth. It's a um, machine to uh, take a standard uh, box end wrench or um, you know open end wrench, either one. And then of course it's shaped to give it a nice dome shape with a profile. And then this upper edge here, this rim around here, is uh, roughly the same diameter as the hammer face. So that uh, you know when the hammer strikes, it's not just hitting the pin and whatnot. It's actually got a flat surface to to work against so that it. Uh, doesn't mushroom any of this out or, or beat it up and make it so that the firing pin ends up catching or grinding or you know snagging inside of there that way. So not much to it really though. It's just a nut with a hole through it basically. Now I'll get on with making the firing pins and uh, get them in place and get them shaped and cut to length and then I'll be ready to move on to the back action locked. So there it is with both firing pins in with the springs in place so that they rebound and uh, I'll open it up here and hopefully you'll be able to see the amount of protrusion that it gets. Oops, sorry. A little bump to the camera there. But uh, hopefully this will still stay focused enough that you can see it has the proper amount of protrusion in it and a nice rebound to it. So there we go. So that's going to be it for the week. Um, I did actually make some progress on the uh, lock plates, but I'm going to add that to next week's video because it just doesn't tie in very well with the end of this week. So this will be the end of it. Um, next week I'll uh, show you what I got done on the lock plates and uh, show you where I'm headed with them and uh, how they're going to look. And hopefully by the end of next week I'll have the lock plates done and I'll be able to start on wood the week after that. So everything goes well. Next week I should have the two back action locks finished up and remodeled and, and you'll see how the safeties and everything work on them and then uh, from there we'll go on to starting on some woodwork.